Hello and welcome to a very special midweek episode of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast, brought to you by Seat Tires. I'm your host this week, Ashwin. I'm joined by DJ. Unfortunately, for these midweek episodes, we will not have Varun in Singapore because my math is right at the time of recording this. It's five in the morning his time. And I think that's a pretty hard time to get him. Even if we managed to get him at 5 a.m., he'd be pretty grumpy. So you're best off with DJ and myself. But for those of you who've been listening for over a year, starting last year, actually, we did these bi-weekly or these twice a week episodes, if you will, for the IPL, just because there's so much to talk about. And so we'll make sure we cover the first three games of the week during this Wednesday episode. And then we'll cover the rest of them on the weekend episode. But DJ, what are we at? I think five games into the IPL so far, five or six games in. RCP at the top of the table, a special from maybe De Villiers, a couple of five wicket hauls, I think three or four last ball, last over finishes. Not a bad start overall, right? It's been pretty interesting. You've had some good meltdowns as well, some comebacks, dropped catches all over the place, some brilliant fielding, some poor fielding, some poor batting, some brilliant bowling. It's it's all happening, man. The IPL is back. Um Nearly a week in and um, always excited to do these midweek episodes because it allows us to talk the games a little bit more in depth. So, yeah, really happy to be here and uh, talking cricket All right, with you, so man. In our previous episode, we covered the first three matches, right? Uh, obviously, Bangalore got off to a winning start against Mumbai, which was a little bit of a surprise, but good. Delhi got off to a winning start against CSK, which I don't want to think is a surprise, but on paper, according to the last 14 years, was probably a surprise. And then... DJ, you talked uh, in the second half of last week's show, the Hyderabad versus KKR game. So let us come to Monday's game. Rajasthan Royals faced off versus the Punjab Kings. I have to always check myself before I almost say the Kings 11 Punjab. Let's start with really quickly Punjab's team selection, right? They ended up getting 221 for six. I want to hit Rahul opened with Mayank. Mayank didn't come good on the day. Varun had actually said he doesn't think Chris Gale will play the opening match of the season. And he did. And he made 40 of 28, which I think I'd say by most batsman standards, pretty good. By Chris Gale's standard, probably not great. But what do you what do you reckon about the team selection? And just going down the other overseas players they played were Jai Richardson, Riley Meredith, and Nicholas Puran, who again fell short. But thoughts on, on Punjab's approach going into the, the first match? Or their I mean, first match? All, all the question was around how Rahul would bat, right? And he answered all of that with a 182 strike rate, even quicker than the universe boss himself, who, I mean, I think you asked the question about what you thought about uh, Chris Gale's performance. It wasn't shoddy. I mean, he was he was batting pretty quickly, some nice sixes, and maybe his off-field activities and all the rap videos he's doing have been affecting his net practice. But man, um, good move by these guys bringing the universe boss in. First game you saw, he um, gave them that impetus that they sorely kind of lacked at the start of last year. Uh, 40 of 28, but my, I mean, the guy who really stole the show, despite Rahul's 91, we have to talk about Deepak Huda, man. What an innings by that sort of young man. I want to say young man, but he's been around for a while. And I mean, I thought he played that breathtaking innings, uh, which was the innings of the Punjab, uh, uh, Punjab half of the match for me. Yeah, so incredible, right? He Deepak Huda... Ended up getting Punjab to 221 for six, right? We're going to remember his name. We'll come back and talk to him a little bit. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Rajasthan Royals chase then, right? DJ, 221 at the 1K day. Oh, let's say start step back. 221 anywhere is a big daunting target. Do you just go into a 221 at the 1K day saying, hey, you know what? This might be chaseable. This is pretty doable. So that's the big that's the big thing about the first game of this week, the one on Monday, was played at the one K day, which historically has had huge scores scored on it and then chased on. If I'm if I'm not wrong, South Africa once scored nearly four hundred against us at the one K day uh, against the Indian team, and um, a T Twenty game saw Joe Root uh, chase down two hundred and forty odd against South Africa again as well. So it's not surprising seeing those huge scores. The Mumbai Indians, when they've played at home, have scored heavily, right? You've seen Pollard hitting those huge sixes. I've actually been at a uh, Delhi Daredevils versus Mumbai Indians game at the one kid and Pollard was just flipping it into a uh, marine drive for fun. So, um, yeah, 221, uh, they would have thought, this is chaseable. This is the one kid the ball flies, good batting deck, ball comes onto the um, bat. And remember, this is the team against which they have chased 222 last year with uh, Rahul Tevatia pulling a special 
and the new term being tevatia had been coined right so i mean 221 was actually a run less than they chased at sharja last year so they would have been feeling confident yeah i'm glad you remember that cuz i i don't have the quite a, quite the memory or attention to detail to remember that but let me quickly ask you before we get to the chase they had a, a what one two three eight different people bowled right mustafa zur overseas bowler went for 11.2 no wickets in chris morris highest price tag of the season went for 10.2 picked up two wickets near the end but went for 10.2 shreyas gopal went for 13 stokes bowled one over went for 12 runs and over devatia bowled two overs went for 12.5 shivam dube bowled one went for 20 rian parag bowled one picked up one for seven where he looked good but let's talk about the the remaining guy in that lineup and there is a young chap who bowled four overs three for 31 at an economy rate of 7.8 dj who am i talking about yeah absolutely fantastic debut by the young man chetan sakaria but i just wanted before we get into the chetan sakaria chat i want to actually say you actually said rian parag look good he bowled a ball that was even lower than kedar jada yeah. and there was a great meme that came around which said like it had a malinga on top with his side arm He said, "This is what you think. This is what you're doing. But actually, what you end up doing is Keja and and Rian Parag. So it was like reality versus Instagram. Quite funny. Oh great meme. Great meme. And we should do a meme review one of these days. But Chetan Sakaria, man, I um really impressed by the young man. Really, really impressed. I think when we spoke to Jake um, at the Rajasthan Royals, he actually mentioned that this young man that they picked up." Um, it was the auction was a little bit of sweet for him. I think he went for about one point two crores, but. he lost his brother maybe 3 um weeks before that who committed suicide so a very very sad story on that front but i mean he's obviously an outstanding talent he's come through a scholarship program as well it's a great story i'll put a link to the article about the chetan sakaria story but i mean just a magnificent debut i was so pleased to see a young man who was bowling so cleverly he wasn't overawed by the occasion he wasn't Uh, worried about the names in front of him he took a brilliant catch as well remember and he's only 6 points in fantasy so i had him in my team so very very pleased on that front as well but just uh, so good to see him he has a little bit of mohammad amir about him he's got kind of that jump and that that bowling action reminds me a little bit of mohammad amir and i think i was messaging you guys when i said he just needs to keep his foot behind the line and literally the next ball he bowls a no ball right Which yeah hopefully not too much mohammad amir very amir spooky <laughs> very very spooky but very pleased for the young man he's got a big future man he's got a big future in the ipl and uh, let's see how he does um, on the national front but they'll be keeping an eye on him really really good to see him yeah so chetan sakaria and deepak huda actually this week for their for his 64 of 28 and 3 for 31 are both going to share our siat puncture resistant award for the week both outstanding players both have been through a lot huda huda had a really tough domestic season Sakaria has also as DJ mentioned been through a lot personally so very excited to see uh, you know quote unquote young if you will one is younger than the other but you know newer to the scene IPL talent just doing outstanding work so they are both our shared Seat puncture resistant award winners of uh, not necessarily the week but the midweek almost episode. of the midweek yeah let's of go the midweek the right let's talk about this chase DJ Ben Stokes comes out to open maybe a little bit of a surprise to some gets out on the third ball of the match to a, a great you know opening over from Shami they're sitting at 25 from 2 and you think okay here we go again Rajasthan Royals opening match doesn't doesn't don't get up to a great start or suddenly you start going on on paper saying this team isn't great Josh Butler then gets out in the 8th over the 74-3 their new skipper i was messaging you i think i said their template the template for the royals every year just seems to be that sanju will have a magnificent opening game or at least one of the first two or three games the whole country will be talking about how he needs to play more for india this guy deserves it he's he's too good to be left out you can't you're wasting him on the sidelines all that and exactly the same thing happened this year comes out makes 119 of 63 walk me through quickly how you felt about that watching that sanju innings so to tell you the honest truth i think it was it was a good innings to watch but they it shouldn't have been that long genuinely the the, the chances they dropped the kings 11 punjab genuinely only have themselves to blame for having sanju score 119 against him and nearly lose the match because kl rahul's dropped what should have been a fairly simple catch and then mayank agarwal who's a brilliant fielder has dropped another catch which is again fairly simple so um i thought samson's performance was 
was great but it was slightly marred by those uh, missed chances there's nothing he can do about them he's given those chances but if they'd taken those chances we would be having a very different conversation about sanju samson so on another day sanju's been caught he's out for out for 15 or 20 or whatever he was on equally kl rahul himself was dropped when he was on 15 he went on to make 91 so you've got to make the best of the chances you're given but i think that the punjab kings really had themselves to blame for putting themselves in that position sanju samson as always brilliant easy on the eye hitting i think it's seven sixes and nearly took them home uh, we saw perhaps uh the responsibility of captaincy and what that did to him towards the end but i'm sure that will be a talking point but uh, as always brilliant to see samsung score runs for me i would rather have him score more 50s than a couple of hundreds and then fade away completely i'd i'd love to see him score 8 or 950s this season rather than 200s and then nothing else so first ever player to get a 100 on ipl captaincy debut i want to just quickly talk through the seesaw at the end of this match right 48 of 24 needed with six wickets in hand pretty doable these days you'd say right pretty manageable a great over from shami gets uh, a wicket and eight runs it comes down to 40 of 18 the man who just got picked up by for 14 crores comes out to bowl and to samson mostly and tevati on the other end gives 19 runs jai richardson he crumbled a little bit under pressure he gives 19 runs i guess he was 36 from his first three and gave 19 to end it for figures of four of one for 55 suddenly you're down to what i got to do math really quickly you need 20 odd runs off the last two overs comes down to 13 of 7 comes down to 13 of 6 chris morris is batting not not the second most but the most expensive player of this year's auction chris morris batting with sanju samson i'm going to quickly run down this arshdeep singh who's been an outstanding player for punjab in the last few years dot ball samson takes a single of the second ball we're down to 12 of 4 morris takes a single morris is struggling to make good contact at this point right at this point he's sitting on 2 of 4 samson hits a 6 down to so sorry down to 5 runs needed off two balls which is some combination of 2 and 2 to get to a super over 2 and 3 1 and 4 samson hits it down to deep extra cover denies the single you've got chris morris on the end who if let's say they taken one you needed four runs off the last ball you gave morris a chance to hit four you gave yourself the chance to hit three and get to a super over the skipper sanju samson denies the single needed five of one ball now has to sky it gets it high in the air and gets caught out by the pakuda which felt poetic samson looked you know gutted at the end dj really quickly walk me through that decision making was it was it adrenaline or was it do you still believe hey under the situation or given the situation he made the right call so i'd say i think when you look at it at 5 of 2 um he said it straight to extra cover mid, uh, long off there isn't a two there let's be let's be totally honest there isn't a two there there isn't a three there either uh, so let's rule those out it wasn't a boundary it comes down to one question whether they did something like what kyron pollard did a couple of seasons ago whether they go for the two even though you've got a short run but you've still got one I don't think San- that crossed Sanju's mind. He hit it hard. He, he realized there wasn't a single there. Uh, there was a single there, nothing more. He just backed himself. He was he hit seven sixes. He hit a bunch of boundaries, and he backed himself to either clear the. In fact, he just backed himself to clear the boundary. He didn't even try and hit the last one on on the ground. So, um, and Morris, remember, wasn't really hitting it well. He he wasn't middling it. So, I'm okay with that decision making. You know, it it it. if he took the responsibility of getting his team across the line he took the responsibility of winning the match for his team he was the man in in form he was the man in on strike and so you can understand the decision making there equally if he taken the single there would be everyone would be out for his blood saying why did he take the single he's batting on 100 plus why is he given morris uh, the the strike when morris isn't uh, scoring any runs so i totally understand the decision making maybe there could have been a little bit of gamesmanship but i didn't think that crossed sanju mind sanju sanju's mind at all but also the other thing was i mean i've been so pleased to watch the indian talent come good this season you've seen harshal patel you've seen avish khan today you saw or sorry on monday you saw um, arshdeep singh and chetan sakari i mean the wealth of talent that is on show in this ipl is just brilliant arshdeep singh emerged last season and for him to bowl that pressure over against somebody like a sanju samson 
after getting hit for six is just incredible. So um, yeah, I'm okay with the decision. Um, I don't think he could have played it any differently. And uh, well done to the Punjab Kings or the Kings Eleven Punjab, as we used to call them back in the day. So um, they seem to have changed their fortune with the change in name. Yeah, well said, DJ. I think this was the second of four consecutive matches, basically Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all of where the chasing team fell just short. And you can argue in most of, in all four of the cases, they probably shouldn't have. That wraps up our first match of the week. We're going to take a quick see tire strategic timeout. We will be back after this to talk about the, the Tuesday and Wednesday games of this week's IPL. Welcome back to the edges and sledges cricket podcast powered by see tires, the Tuesday game. Kolkata Knight Riders making their playing their second match against Mumbai Indians also playing their second match. Both teams won. Actually, no, sorry. KKR won their first game. Mumbai looking for their first win. DJ, in summation of this match, Mumbai batted pretty poorly and honestly had no business winning this match. But it's happened time and time again. For those of us who watched the IPL for the last 14 years, somehow Mumbai has this ability to find victory. So before we get into the details, is winning a habit is all the cliches. Insert cliche here. Winning is a habit. Mumbai has, you have to know how to win. All of them. Is that is that what it is with Mumbai or was it just KKR imploded? So I, I think there was a bit of KKR implosion, but you have to give credit, no matter how much it hurts us, to give credit where it's due. And so last season we saw... Um, the the Mercedes S class come out for for the Mumbai Indians. They just kind of cruise to a title, right? And there were no trouble at any point in the in the season. It was no no. It was like a very smooth ride. This time we saw the mongrel in them. We saw the fight in them. We saw them scrapping, right? We saw Krunal Pandya so angry for himself. We saw them throwing the ball around in anger. We saw. Rohit Sharma coming on to bowl. We saw all the things that go in. I mean, the, these guys are champions for a reason because they hate losing. They've lost the first game of the season. They're okay, fine. They're, they're slow starters. But you saw the fight come out of the Mumbai Indians in this game. And I was a little bit taken aback because last season we saw them in cruise control. But this season we were taken back maybe a few seasons where they were winning finals of the last ball with Malinga bowling that way. They were winning a final against the rising Pune Super Giants with a run out of the last ball and stuff. So this was more the old Mumbai for me. And it was actually good to see they're human because last season they didn't feel human. They didn't feel beatable. This season they felt beatable. But even then they overcame. That's what they say. It's about winning ugly, right? It's, you don't care about when Federer is winning, we're hitting a beautiful backhand down the line, right? The real champions can win when they're not playing their best. They win ugly. And Mumbai won ugly. And it was, it was pretty awesome to watch, actually, to be fair. Winning ugly. I kind of like that expression. It's a little painful, but it does conjure the right image. So, But let me go through the details of this really quick, right? Surya Kumar Yadav makes a blistering 56, gets, uh, you know, unfortunately out. But Mumbai didn't look in too bad a spot. At 86 for two in 10 overs, you think, all right, 160, 170 maybe. And then the wickets started to fall. And Russell picked up five wickets in just 12 balls. Five for 15 in just 12 balls. I think uh, three of them came in that final over. Not the second time, actually, we've seen that this IPL already with, with Harshal Patel doing it for the first time. Just, just overall bizarre. Still, though, still, you have to say 22 off 18 needed, five down, you have Dinesh Karthik and Andre Russell. I feel like I'm reliving that Punjab match again that we just talked about, but 22 of 18 needed and Kronal bowling. They only got three runs of that first over. Russell didn't look good. It was a drop catch, etc. Then, of course, you have Jaspreet Bumrah. His figures in IPL never do justice to the the um, incredible contribution he has went for four runs in that 19th over and then yeah Russell got out Cummins came and got out first ball Trent Bolt just found a way to find his Yorkers and Mumbai said somehow ended up 10 runs on top with having just made 152 when KKR was absolutely cruising in the chase so left out as left us with Mumbai and KKR each having won one and lost one going into week two of the IPL and then we came to today's game. At least today is the time of recording this. It'll be later by the time you hear this. Bangalore versus the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Another low-scoring encounter, right? So back-to-back -back games in Chennai. Uh, obviously, all three of the Chennai games, the pitches started to look probably a little bit worse and worse. DJ, let me start by asking you a little bit. So so Dev Dutt Padikal made his way back into the RCB side, right? Of course, 
he earned his spot as opener coming off the grade last season. We talked last week about how COVID kept him out, etc. Is it harsh on a young guy like what is it, Rajat Patidar, I think, to miss out after just one game? How do you, how do you justify that for a young talent? I think uh, I wouldn't say it's harsh. I mean, DDP was always going to be a starter for the RCB, right? And um, with his performance last season and his uh, great uh, Vijay Hazare trophy that he's just had. it would be criminal for them to leave him out he's a class player you you saw him start off quite nicely as well today but uh, didn't quite kick on so uh, rajat will wait his time um and i mean it's a long season right and and things change so um he sh- he should stay ready and i'm sure he'll get another shot at some stage and then as i ask you about the sunrisers hyderabad who of course came up short in this match as we all know they're now sitting on two losses from their two starting games I know you don't have a lot of love for their game style of gameplay etc does it I I don't have a great so don't don't quote me on the stats for this but does it feel like they always start the season saying we don't need Williamson and at some point in the season they say my gosh you can't leave out one of the best three backs in the world across all formats they bring him in and they start to get results thanks to him is that what's happening here again Yeah, uh, I have no idea, man. They've got so much overseas talent, right? They've got Besto, but if Besto's batting four, I just wonder whether you'd have a Kane Williamson to give you that stability. I mean, particularly today, you felt the uh, you felt the gap for somebody a cool head like Williamson just guiding the the chase home. Even yesterday, you had a Shaki Bo. Um, those guys come in and kind of throw the the game away almost against Rahul Chahar. But the big difference in these games, right? The games at Chennai is that. Sp- Spin really rules the roost, and we saw how Rahul Chahar changed the game for Mumbai. Then we saw how Krunal Pandya. He bowled. I mean, we haven't mentioned Krunal Pandya in the Mumbai Indians game. He bowled four overs for thirteen, and so you need somebody who's able to maneuver the spinners around at a runner ball, right? You can't let somebody go for a four overs thirteen type of spell. So I think the Sunrisers Hyderabad would probably be better suited to having someone like Ken Williamson who can accelerate and who can play the anchor. Bestos probably got just one gear, which is attack, 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 which hasn't paid off in the last couple of games, right, for them. So, um, yeah, um, Sunrisers will be looking at their template and hopefully, I mean, it's almost a defensive move, and I've always been critical of them for being a very defensive franchise uh, and not being an exciting franchise to watch, but. Um, Besto is actually one of the players I enjoy watching in the Sunrisers Hyderabad, and I'm actually advocating against him uh, for Kane. But I think they've got to do that to to make that middle order look more solid. Yeah. So let me quickly do the rundown. Virat looked pretty good, made 33 of 29. I think he made exactly 33 of 29 in both matches so far, which is interesting. Not fast, not quite fast enough, but when you have the the hitting prowess, you do later as RCB later lower down the order, he can probably afford it. Nobody else really did well for the RCB, honestly, other than Glenn Maxwell. And he started a little slow, looked a little scratchy, and then ended up with fifty nine of forty one. Uh, ended up getting out, but you know, took his team to one forty nine, which not a great total by T twenty standards. Arguably, at the Chennai pitches with the Chennai pitches, proven to be defendable at least, right? But I mean, almost at ninety six for one in thirteen point one overs with David Warner batting on fifty four, seven overs they needed. Seven overs, forty-two. They need a fifty-four of forty-two with nine wickets in hand. You almost turn the TV off at that point, right? And you just say David Warner's there. You got Bairstow to come. You have uh, Samad, Shankar, Holder, Rashid. All can bat. That match should have been a done deal, right? I feel like I've asked you this three times in the three matches we've covered, but this is the third match where it should have been a done deal. Fifty-four of forty-two with nine wickets. Yeah, and should've... I mean, we almost saw an action replay of the game on Tuesday between the Mumbai Indians and the KKR, right? I mean. and that's what the rcb fans would have been hoping that there was some magic that came out from there you saw david warner went once david warner went there was a little bit of a shake it's always restrict the opposition to 160 and david warner will knock the runs off with a little bit of help from maybe a vijay shankar or a manish pandey but again manish pandey just got stuck he batted at a run a ball which arguably wasn't wrong in these circumstances i mean he didn't need to score any quicker than that he just needed to hang around till the end and they would have won now I mean, absolutely incredible scenes. Again, it was uh, a, another Indian young player, Shahbaz Ahmed. I think he plays for Bengal. Just picking up three wickets in one over, which is, I mean, we were just sat there watching there, going, "What is going on? Why are they committing Harakiri in this manner?" And you saw Harshal Patel bowl really well. Mohammad Siraj started off brilliantly. 
So a real team effort from the RCB man, and uh, this Chennai pitch is looking worrisome, right? I mean, you can see the difference between the Delhi games and the Rajasthan games. The Delhi and Rajasthan play each other tomorrow. They're going to be playing at the Wankhede. Day. So stock your fantasy team with batsmen, guys. Whereas if you're playing at Chennai, um, actually I shouldn't be speaking. I had Chahil as my captain today, and he picked zero wickets. But I mean, arguably that was the right thinking because it was a spinning wicket, and the spinners did all the damage the day before, like with Rahul Chahar. So. I mean, uh, the teams will really need to assess the conditions for their uh, for their 11s now. It, it's not going to be a one size fits all anymore. Yeah, and hey, Shabazz Ahmed was the game changer, like you said. So spin did matter. You just had the wrong spinner in your fantasy team. Right? Yeah, I, I picked DDP as my un, uncapped, unfortunately. Hey, it's a early in the fantasy season. We'll do a quick wrap, DJ. Three matches this week. Delhi plays Rajasthan tomorrow. Delhi looked fantastic in the first game. Rajasthan also looked pretty good, but will be gunning for a win. We won't go through the next few. By the time we come to you next, this first double header should be done. It's going to be exciting. And IPL fever is just here and alive and kicking. You can hear it in our voices. Let me just ask you really quickly, like which of the teams are out of the eight so far? I know it's super early. Which of the eight teams has looked the best to you? So I would say Delhi has probably looked the best. Uh, followed closely by Mumbai. Rajasthan has just lost Stoke, so they've they've kind of slipped a little further down. But I, I think Delhi and Mumbai are looking pretty good, but it's uh, pretty early for Delhi as well. I mean, they've only played one game, so we'll find out tomorrow, but they're playing the Royals without Jofra and um, Stoke, so they'll be fancying their chances, or when I say they, we will be fancying our chances. That is right. So that brings us to a wrap of the IPL matches for this week. You know, I'd say exciting last over finishes, but at the same time, a little bit surprising that chasing has typically been easier in the IPL and four teams back to back have fallen short within under all under 15 runs, right? Just getting close to the target, but, but couldn't push over the line. Maybe a little bit of fatigue, maybe a little bit of sometimes the crowds in the stadiums help get that batsman energized and push it over the line. There's a lot of great stuff going on. We are going to, we have a back with SEAT contest DJ that I'll ask you to plug in a minute, but if you aren't yet playing fantasy cricket with us, come play the Edges and Sledges Fan League. We're on the official IPLT20.com fantasy platform. We have 208 teams in our league so far. So that doesn't give me a lot of hope on where I will end up. But in our episodes, we'll do a quick plug for the teams that are at the top. So hopefully none of the, the teams in the top three have complicated names like they did last year, but we'll try to make it work. So at the time of recording this, at the end of six matches, um, a team named Whistle Podu Mari is at number one. 4,084 points. I do want to say it looks like this person has used all their boosters and used a ton of substitutes with 11 guys playing in every game for so far. So, you know, it's an interesting strategy. Get off to a fast lead, but obviously we'll start to slow down. In number two is a team named Liju Soman and number three is a team named Rongans. So pretty healthy leads. I don't know how far I have to scroll to start finding our teams. I am in rank number 58 out of 208. So at least I'm, I'm at the top I'm 25. I'm at 55. So oh, just you're, ahead of me? You. you're just ahead of me. I've got 2,160 then, because I had Chehel and A.B. de Villiers as my players instead of Warner and Holder, who I should have actually had. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there you go. I had Warner. Our captain and vice captain make, right? He I was, had Warner and Maxwell and that helped me a little. Um, Varun, who is not actually in our league at the moment, we need to get him to join us at 1,700. And, What's up with him? Let's hope he hears this. Maybe he'll hear this and judge. But I'm I, not I doubt it. He doesn't listen to the podcast. 100%. He has 1,707 points, which I'm stalling, but would have him at 130. Oh, he is in the league. I'm sorry. I just missed it. That's oh, he's at 100. Oh, he's so far he's, down. You didn't he's think so he far was down. I had to scroll. Ouch. He did join. Dude, but that's he's mean. I think he said that one. <laughs> 100, yeah, let's act like I did on purpose. He's at 130. That brings us to a wrap. Join our league if you haven't yet found it. It's on Twitter. We have it all over social. Just send us a message anytime. We'll share that league. Great to see the Edges and Sledges fan league growing. DJ, do you want to plug our contest really quickly? Yeah, guys. So uh, there's two things. One, send in your Seattle Strategic Masterstroke for playing on the uh, Seattle Strategic Timeout on the next episode. It could be Deepak Huda coming up the order. It could be Chetan Sakaria being played. It could be running a short run when Sanju Samson needed to get two, right? So any of those things that happened during the week, write into us, contact at one tip one hand.com or send us a Twitter voice note and you could find yourself being played during the break on the next episode. The other contest that we've got is the hashtag bat with Seat contest. And that is uh, you could win an autographed Seat cricket bat 
uh, we give away one bat every week by our friends um, from Seat Tires have agreed to do that kindly. You've just got to answer this one question, which should be easy enough, which is which uncapped bowler has taken the maximum number of wickets in the IPL to date? So the question is, which bowler that hasn't played international cricket for India has taken the maximum number of wickets in the IPL so far? Write into us on Twitter at one tip one hand with the answer using the hashtag bat with Siat. Over to you, Ashwin. That's it. Brings us to a wrap. First midweek episode of the IPL is in the bag. We'll be back this weekend as always. Engage with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at one tip one hand, or join our Discord. If you're not in our Discord, it has gotten so big, I can't even keep up. Sometimes a match will happen and I'll join like 30 minutes later and it'll say 400 messages. But great conversation. We and love you can having have your own you team there. colors as well on Discord now. DJ has figured out the technology. You can have your team colors. Just join us. It's a great place for the Edges and Sledges listener community. That is it. Thank you for listening. This has been Edges and Sledges, powered by Seat Tires. We will be back to you this weekend.